So 19th century Chinese diaspora sites in the American West often yield diverse fish assemblages that include species sourced from throughout the Pacific world and beyond. These fish bones serve as evidence of both the wide ranging trade networks that connected Chinese diaspora communities and the many Chinese fishers who supplied them. In this paper, uh, myself and my co-author Brian Kemp discuss new uh, insights gleaned from ongoing ancient DNA and zooarchaeological analyses of fish bones from Chinese diaspora sites in California and Wyoming. Specifically, we present new evidence for the regional trade of several native California fishes across the American West, as well as the importation of fishes to Chinese diaspora communities from previously undocumented locations. As we'll discuss, these data highlight the scale of Chinese fish-based trade networks and the importance of migration and entrepreneurialism to the success of Chinese fishers. We like to first provide brief background on Chinese diaspora fisheries in the 19th century. Fishing and aquaculture have a long history in Guangdong province where the majority of 19th century Chinese people in the United States came from. Both freshwater and marine species were used and mild white flesh fishes like croakers, flatfishes and minnows were most popular. Both fresh and dried fish were consumed. Although fresh fish was expensive and rarely in the rural farming villages where most Chinese migrants grew up in. Myriad kinds of dried fishes were produced and they could be both economical sources of protein and important ingredients in even the most luxurious of dishes. Just as Chinese consumers ate a wide range of fish products, Chinese fishers used a wide range of fishing methods, including hook and line and net fishing. Rising populations and overfishing in China's coastal waters led to increasing demand for fish products that could not be met solely by local supply. In this context, fishing became a source of income for Chinese entrepreneurs abroad. Chinese fishers and fishing villages relied on the flexibility of Southern Chinese foodways to incorporate new species into culinary practice. And on Jinshan Huang, or Chinese-run import-export firms based out of Hong Kong, to ship fish to markets across the Pacific world. Previous archeological analysis of Chinese diaspora fish assemblages highlights the use of a core group of fishes, including North American marine uh, fishes like rock fishes and flat fishes, North American freshwater fishes like minnows and Sacramento perch, and imported Asian fishes, uh, marine fishes like yellow croakers. Although most work classifies these fish simply as either local or exotic species, detailed analysis based on species native ranges and historical accounts of Chinese fishers in North America highlights multiple distinctive fisheries where these fish were sourced, including the Sacramento and San Joaquin River systems, San Francisco Monterey Bay, Southern California and the South China Sea. Our current study combines zooarchaeological and ancient DNA analyses of fish remains from five Chinese diaspora sites with the goal of understanding the intricacies of 19th century Chinese fisheries. Although our methods are detailed elsewhere, in short, I conducted the bulk of zooarchaeological analysis at either Indiana University or the University of New Orleans using standard morphological methods and an extensive comparative skeletal collection. My colleague Brian Kemp um, directed all ancient DNA analyses in the University of Oklahoma's Laboratories of Molecular Anthropology and Microbiome Research. And then this analysis relies on targeting uh, a, a sequence or a, a series of sequences of the fish mitochondrial genome that can provide species, genus, or family level identifications via what is known as DNA barcoding. Our five study sites date largely to the late 19th century and are as follows. One, the Market Street Chinatown, a large urban Chinese community in San Jose, California. Two, the Arboretum Chinese Labor Quarters, or ACLQ for short, located on the Stanford University campus and home to around a dozen or so Chinese workers on the former Stanford stock farm. Three, the Point Alonis Chinese Fishing Village along the shores of Monterey Bay, California and Pacific Grove. Four, the Aspen Section Camp, a railroad repair camp in Southwestern Wyoming that was home to around a dozen Chinese railroad workers. And five, the Rock Springs Chinatown, located in southwestern Wyoming, home to several hundred Chinese residents on the site of the infamous Rock Springs Massacre in 1885. We'll now give a brief overview of the data from each of these sites before discussing broader themes. Marcus Street Chinatown fish assemblage is extraordinarily diverse. And my analysis of 5,700 fish bones identified over 65 kinds of fish at the site. North American taxa includes uh, freshwater fishes like cyprinids, uh, minnows, suckers, and Sacramento perch, anadromous fishes like sturgeon and salmon, and an incredible array of marine fishes from throughout the Pacific coast, including rock fishes, surf perches, silver sides, flat fishes such as starry flounder, petroli sole, and California sheephead. With few exceptions, the identified species consist of mild tasting fishes that lend themselves well to Southern, Ch Southern Chinese styles of cooking and drying. Though with San Jose's proximity to coastal waters, a portion of these fish were likely eaten fresh as well. 
Imported Asian species represent nearly 20% of the overall fish assemblage by count and include threadfin bream, white herrings, yellow croakers, puffer fishes, flounders, and snakeheads. Ancient DNA data have refined zooarchaeological identifications for the markets of Chinatown, including by species level identifications for Chinese white herring and smooth blaisop, a kind of puffer fish, both previously identified only the genus at other Chinese diaspora sites. A DNA analysis also provides identifications of multiple Asian fishes previously unknown in North American sites, including cinnamon flounder, Malabar jack, the tonguefish genus Cynoglossus, and the croaker genus Nibia. Although these species and, and genera have uh, fairly broad ranges, these findings still serve to highlight the diversity of fishes taken across Asian fisheries. Perhaps most exciting is the identification of giant snakehead, a freshwater fish native to Southeast Asia, but not China which was the complicated journey fish took from Southeast Asia to Hong Kong, to San Francisco, and finally to San Jose. This journey hinged on a complex set of factors, including the migration of Chinese fishers to Southeast Asia, the identification, harvesting, and processing of snakeheads, the suitability of the species to Chinese food practices, and the transport of these fish from Sung Hoang across the Pacific Ocean. Overall, these data show that consumers in this and likely other large urban communities had access to a staggering array of fish products caught by Chinese fishers, not only in coastal and inland California, but also throughout the South China Sea and in Southeast Asia. The Arboretum Chinese Labor Quarters assemblage contains roughly 1,700 fish bones, including many of the species found at the Market Street Chinatown. Common North American taxa include a wide range of flat fishes, such as Petrali sole and English sole, um, other fish like white flounders, surf perches, rock fishes, minnows, and Sacramento perch, all of which were plentiful in California's marine and fresh waters. This assemblage also includes bones from striped bass, a species transplanted from the East Coast to San Francisco Bay in 1879, after which it rapidly became an integral part of California fisheries. As with Market Street Chinatown, nearly 20% of the ACLQ assemblage derives from imported Asian fishes, such as threadfin bream and white herrings. This collection also included a single bone from a milkfish, a species found on both sides of the Pacific Ocean. And to my knowledge, this is the first ar archeological identification of this species in the United States. Ancient DNA analysis of seven rockfish samples revealed the use of, at minimum, chili pepper, canary, and boccaccio rockfishes, as well as what appears to be a common snook, uh, a specimen that I misidentified as a rockfish. This is an exciting find, as this species is native to the Gulf of Mexico and, as we'll discuss shortly, is part of a body, a growing body of evidence linked to Chinese fishers in coastal Louisiana and elsewhere on the Gulf Coast. Similarly, ancient DNA analysis identified striped corvina, a species native to the Gulf of California and the Pacific coast of Mexico, which links, Chinese, links to Chinese fishers in these areas. Genetic data also document numerous bones from Waniaso lizardfish, common in Asian uh, marine waters, as well as American shad, which like the striped bass was introduced uh, to California from the east. Whereas the Market Street Chinatown and ACLQ document the activities of Chinese fishers across the Pacific world and beyond, the roughly 2,400 fish bones from the Point Alonis Chinese fishing village assemblage derived from fish caught, processed, and eaten by Chinese fishers and their families in Monterey Bay, California. Rockfish represent nearly 60% of this assemblage, with flatfishes representing just under 20% of the, of the remaining bones. The remainder of the assemblage includes a diverse array of species like Pacific hake, cabazon, jack mackerel, surf perches, sharks, striped bass, and wolf eels, the latter identified by biologist Ken Gobelet. Nearly all of the identified fishes have also occurred at Chinese consumer sites, suggesting that Chinese fishers dried and exported the vast majority of the fish species that they caught. The identification of wolf eel is notable as this is the first time this species has, ident has been identified at an archaeological site in California. I've since identified two additional wolf eel bones in the Market Street Ch Chinatown assemblage, indicating that, this fish, that these fish were exported. Only 10 bones at the site are from Asian taxa, further um, high highlighting the hyper-local nature of fish use and consumption at the site. Ancient DNA analysis of rockfish bones from Point Alonis identified a diverse array of species, including gopher, copper, tiger, black and yellow, and vermilion rockfishes. An ongoing analysis promises to add more species to this list. It's clear that not only did Chinese fishers target numerous habitats and species in Monterey Bay, they also dried and exported most kinds of fish they caught to markets in the American West and China. The Aspen section camp yielded roughly 1,000 fish bones, and identified fishes include pike minnows, identified the genus level, two California freshwater species in Sacramento perch and Sacramento blackfish, 
multiple California coastal species, including rock California sheephead and starry flounder, and a small number of yellow croakers from Asia. These imported species almost arrived as dried fish via rail, and they further document Chinese fishing operations throughout coastal California and Asia. Further, the presence of Sacramento perch and Sacramento blackfish is the earliest known evidence of an export industry centered on California's freshwater fish species. To further examine Chinese freshwater fisheries in California, Brian Kipp's team conducted a DNA analysis of 30 pike minnow and unspecified minnow bones from the site. And the results show that all identified samples likely derive from a single species, the Sacramento pike minnow. Like Sacramento perch and Sacramento blackfish, Sacramento pike minnows are found in California's Sacramento and San Joaquin River drainages. And their presence in the assemblage highlights a thriving Chinese run freshwater fishery in California. Finally, although I've conducted only limited zooarchaeological analysis on fish remains from the Rock Springs Chinatown, this work documents the presence of imported striped bass, rock fishes, Sacramento perch, and the sea trout genus Sinocyon. Six samples of the latter were chosen for ADNA analysis by Brian Kemp and his team, who identified both spotted sea trout and sand sea trout, both of which are native to the Gulf of Mexico, and reveal additional links to Chinese fishing communities in coastal Louisiana. This finding complements the identification of common snook at ACLQ, and indicates that Chinese fishers in the Gulf of Mexico played a critical role in supplying dried fish products to Chinese diaspora communities across the American West. The zooarchaeological and ADNA data we've presented highlights several broad themes related to Chinese diaspora fisheries. First, our results reconfirm the consistent presence of a core group of mild white-fleshed fishes across Chinese diaspora sites, which aligns with well-documented 19th century Chinese taste preferences for mild fish. Further, our data highlight distribution of fishes at multiple scales, from local consumption to regional and transnational trade, as well as the development of multiple new fisheries that took advantage of previously untapped aquatic resources, such as through the regional trade of wolf eels and freshwater fishes such as Sacramento perch and Sacramento pike minnows. The development of these industries demonstrates entrepreneurialism and the flexibility of Chinese diaspora foodways to easily incorporate new kinds of a trend which provided Chinese fishers with ample opportunities to earn income in new locations, simultaneous conflicts harvesting species valuable to local populations, such as Pacific salmon in the American West. Along these same lines, identification of fishes native to the Gulf of Mexico, Western Mexico, and Southeast Asia confirmed the importance of Chinese fishers outside of the West Coast in China in supplying the fish consumed by Chinese diaspora communities. Not only does this finding indicate that Chinese fish trade was much more extensive uh, than is typically assumed by North American archaeologists, it also makes clear the central role that migration itself played in facilitating the creation of these disparate fishing operations. Finally, these data provide the first and only fish data set from a 19th century Chinese fishing village, which clearly shows that Chinese fishers caught an incredible diversity of fishes using near shore fishing techniques, and that the vast majority of species caught were incorporated into fish processing and export operations. Moving forward, um, we'll continue refining and adding to our zooarchaeological and ancient DNA data sets, especially by uh, expanding analyses to more fully document the range of species harvested and distributed across these sites. Further, we're combining these data with size estimation and stable isotope data sets to identify patterns in fish sourcing and the distribution of different size classes of fishes across different kinds of sites. Ultimately, we aim to not only reconstruct Chinese diaspora fisheries, but also to understand their environmental impacts and the fundamental differences between Chinese diaspora fisheries and other regional fishing operations. Thank you.